Καλησπέρα σας από το Ζάπιο και το Φόρουμ των Δελφών, που για μια ακόμη φορά λόγω πανδημίας θα έχουμε, ε, θα έχουμε στην Αθήνα το, το Ζάπιο. Good evening and uh, welcome to this broadcast from Zapion Megaron, where, logo of the pandemic, it's going to be uh, in Athens instead of the beautiful Delphi. Today, our issue is radical Islam and democratic order. Unfortunately, one of the speakers cannot come, Mr. Panagis Panagiotopoulos. He had personal reasons and he couldn't uh, make it. That means that more time for Mrs. Anne Clementine Larocque which is French Islamist and specialist and analyst for French justice, and Craig Wood, lecturer in political science in Yale University, USA, prestigious university, and also the way at least I knew him as, uh, uh, as a writer in the Atlantic. I'm Pascos Mandravelis, I'm columnist at Kathimerini. So we'll start, ladies, first from Anne to making the introductory comment. Thank you very much to, um, for inviting me in Greece. I'm very happy to travel. And um, I will speak uh, about Islamism because, uh, in fact, I'm working uh, for the investigated uh, judges for French uh, ministry, especially for the judges who uh, carry, about, uh, carry on about uh, anti-terrorism. And in fact, uh, since the attacks of uh, November uh, 13, 2015, uh, justice uh, and uh, judges need experts to speak about Islamism. And in fact, uh, they need experts in, in history, in sociology, uh, in cyberterrorism, and to, in fact, explain us what is the ideology. Uh, this uh, ideology, Islamism, is not Islam, is not jihadism, and we have to, to make just the, the, the difference between the three concepts. And for the judges, it was very, very strange to speak about that, and, and they are not formatted like that. Um, two points um, have, to be, uh, have to be developed. Um, <laughs> the first point, basically, you know that France is the first uh, country of uh, the, Union, uh, the European uh, Union, supplier of young terrorists concerning the departures in Syria and Iraq since uh, 2013. About for more than uh, 2,000 uh, people, young people, uh, left France since uh, 2013 to go to the Sham and to go to the Caliphate, uh, ISIS. And um, some of them are linked between uh, French connection, uh, Belgi Belgium connection, and Syrian connection. As example, you have the brothers Klein, Fabien and Jean-Michel uh, 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 Jean Klein, who, uh, who died in Barouz in uh, 2019 on, on March. In fact, uh, these members uh, demonstrate that there are a network uh, which is very uh, important in Europe since uh, the, the decade of, uh, of the Twin Towers. You have a, a link uh, between uh, this person and Egypt and Syria and Iraq. And in fact, we discovered the network in uh, 2015. In this context, uh, sponsored attacks uh, each France and its neighbor uh, linked Belgium, between you have a network between Morocco, Belgium, France, and uh, Syria. Uh, since uh, 2016, intelligence services have improved their proxies, have improved their methods in France, and in the same time, ISIS influence has decreased uh, until uh, 2019 March. Several reasons explain this French phenomenon. In fact, we are a case. Uh, because uh, French, uh, you know, has an history specific, as the, the past with the colonization, the past with immigration, uh, the color, color of, of colonization, the lack of communication between immigrants and the new generations, they, uh, they look for we see that in the files, in the terrorist files, they look for their roots. They don't know uh, who are there. 
they want her to be uh, uh, an emir, to be a soldier, to be a mujahideen, to become um, uh, someone. <laughs> and we have also economic and social reasons, because you know, uh, people who immigrated um, had been, uh, in fact, uh, uh, located in uh, big terrors and uh, without a, a, good, uh, a good environment to develop uh, themselves. So, uh, this is the, the two points. We have to, to speak about the news of the French Islamist issues. The news, um, you know, if you follow uh, the news, uh, the four last uh, attacks have been carried out by migrants in France. You have two Tunisians, one Chechen, and one Sudanese during the COVID crisis and after. In fact, they are being connected indirectly and direct, uh, indirectly, sorry, to ISIS and to Al-Qaeda. Uh, they are not connecting, uh, connected, they are, they are not very uh, uh, close to, 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 to the organization, but they follow the ideology, the jihadism, and they follow the propaganda also. And in fact, you have a terrorism which is very, very large, uh, and that demonstrates that the propaganda, the communication of ISIS and Al-Qaeda uh, are very, very uh, functional. But if you, uh, take the, uh, if you take the, if you take the, if you look the attack of October 2019, uh, 20, uh, sorry, 2021, 20, 20, 20 um, concerned the attacks against, you know, the history uh, teacher, Samuel Paty. It was uh, very awful for French people. Uh, it was very, uh, uh, I don't know. All the people were very, very stressed by, by, by this way, by this thing, but uh, Samuel Paty, his murderer, you know, was Chechen. But if you uh, look uh, the attack of Samuel Paty, you have a lot of things to say. It demonstrates that in France, you have, you know, a uh, uh, maillage, <laughs> I don't know uh, how we can say that uh, in, uh, in English, a maillage with uh, people who are Islamists, who are activists, and who are very, very concerned by uh, the identity. And they fight France, but with their proper um, weapons. If you take, by example, the, the favor of the pupil who, who was not here when the professor said to the pupils, I will uh, show you the caricatures of Prophet Muhammad, uh, which uh, Charlie Hebdo, you know, the, the newspaper, uh, publicated. In fact, the favor uh, has spread on Twitter uh, his hatred against the history professor, and after that, you have a lot of people who uh, followed him, uh, who said, okay, he has to, uh, to be killed, he has to, uh, to die. Besides, but not close to him, you have the imam, a second person. The Imam, which is very uh, famous in France, Sifriwi, Sifriwi um, which is an activist uh, known by uh, service intelligence, and in fact, he, uh, he wants also, uh, in fact, uh, he has people to avenge the prophet, and to avenge the prophet, uh, which was attacked uh, by uh, Samuel Paty. So the Chechen was connected with the Imam, and after that, the Chechen uh, murdered Samuel Paty. But in fact, if you, if you, if you see the, the problem, you, you, you can say that in France, you find several legal Islamist actors, legal, huh? they are legal, they are not terrorists, but they spread an ideology, a separatist ideology in all the population. And it is a problem. That's the reason why President Macron, uh, in October 2020, uh, <coughs> gave a speech about the Islamism, separatism. 
Now, a law is being voted on this subject, and we are waiting for what is the, yes, what will be the, the, uh, the future of, uh, of this, uh, this issue. Um, so, to conclude, um, I would say that uh, France tries to understand what, uh, what, uh, what it happened uh, since 30 years, I think, 40, 30 years, uh, because it's a long, long uh, processes, phenomenon. And, uh, and now politicians are, to my mind, conscious of the problem. But it's a bit late. Okay, the whole world is trying to understand not only the French, I guess Americans too. Yes, Americans too. Um, first of all, I'm delighted to be here. Very happy to be at the Delphi Economic Forum and to be able to have in person this stimulating conversation with you, Pascos, and you, Anne Clementine. Clementine. So um, when I hear the, the atmosphere that you describe in France, as an American, of course, I feel very lucky. <laughs> the United States contributed just a few hundred uh, travelers to the Islamic State during uh, the, the, the height of it. And uh, that compares very favorably with, with most countries uh, in Western Europe uh, or with Russia. Um, now, that said, the United States does not have uh, the same experience with political violence that much of the rest of the world has had. And so even a small amount of uh, possibility, threat, or actual violence is enough to um, truly terrify Americans um, in a way that, that I, th I think um, many other countries have been able to get used to in advance. Um, when ISIS was um, in its heyday, uh, there was a, a, a period when the US government in particular um, did not know what had happened, what was going on. Uh, this was such a foreign entity that it was a surprise and the correct response to it was very difficult for the United States to, to fathom. I, as a journalist, was going to speak to followers of ISIS I was asking them what they were doing, why now, what was their goal, many of these, these basic questions. And I remember very well when I had a, a conversation with an official at the United States Department of Defense saying, we don't really understand this group. We don't understand this phenomenon. Um, that is, was my view as an outsider who was working on the problem. and he agreed that that was the, the, um, the problem of the United States government as well, that they were simply unsure of what was happening and why. Um, but he said, and I, I found this response very, um, very clear and helpful uh, as a, a view in how the US government would respond, that there are some types of threats that first you understand and then you fight against them. And there are others that are so urgent that you fight against them first and then afterward, you try to understand them. And he said, the obvious case of that would be, say, Nazi Germany. You don't spend 10 years trying to understand the ideology of Nazism. You stop it, and then you do what you need to do in understanding to make sure it doesn't happen again. And he suggested that the Islamic State, ISIS, would be something like that. What I think happened, though, that was a bit dangerous, was that it was uh, surprisingly easy to neutralize ISIS in its territory. The military job was not a difficult one, uh, even if it was an urgent one, because we didn't know. ISIS maybe would take Damascus, would take Baghdad, would take Erbil, would take Ankara. So the fact that it was so simple to militarily defeat the group, I think made it possible to skip the last step. So to oppose ISIS, to neutralize ISIS, but the understanding aspect could be set aside and in fact forgotten. And so I, I think what we're at right now is a point where we still need to look back and find out what happened and what the lessons are going forward. And I, I think there's a few lessons in particular that, that we should be um, spending much more time considering. And I want to add, none of these lessons are uh, specific to Islam. None of these lessons are specific to the kind of radicalization that you find 
even in the Middle East. They are, however, uh, crucial, I think, to understanding a wide range of extremist threats in the world, in the United States, in, um, in many places that, that we don't consider um, specifically touched by, say, jihadism or radical Islamism. So the first of these, I think, is a discovery that um, this feeling of disaffection, dissatisfaction, of grievance that seemed like it could be contained for a long time. Uh, the speed with which it became action was just much faster than anyone predicted. There was, of course, an understanding that, um, is, that populations in the Middle East, in Western Europe, that there was a sense of, of uh, failure to belong, for example, among um, Muslim populations in Western Europe a sense of uh, dissatisfaction at the governments that were in the Arab world. The belief that that, uh, that dissatisfaction would not uh, spill over into violence, I think we now know that spillover into violence can happen much, much more quickly than it originally seemed. Second, there was similarly a speed of creation of identity that was much faster than was expected. The belief that you could, um, that to take many different people. When I was interviewing supporters of ISIS, I interviewed Americans, I, invented, I interviewed Japanese, Norwegians, groups that were very, very different, from di very different origins, and even in some ways very different goals as supporters of ISIS. The idea that you could take all of these very different people and unite them under one banner very quickly I think was not understood and I think is something that can um, potentially happen again. It's almost like a kind of terrorism flash mob that, that is the ability to bind people together like that is something that exists now that didn't exist before and will be a continuing threat going forward even if the, the group that is bound together is not the same one that we saw with uh, jihadism in the mid 2010s. And then finally, Perhaps most important, we're discussing today radical jihadism, jihadism and the democratic legal order, liberal democratic legal order. I think we also have to note that although ISIS was neutralized and although I think everyone correctly perceives the threat of jihadism to be much less than it was just a few years ago, the reasons why that threat is reduced are not particularly liberal or democratic. That is, ISIS was neutralized through military force, and in the countries that contributed the largest numbers of fighters, um, specifically countries in the Arab world, the reasons that those, that those movements are not more powerful today, it tends to have been because of illiberal, authoritarian actions by governments, for example, in Egypt in Saudi Arabia. So it, it would be tempting to say that a liberal democratic wave was triumphant over ISIS, but in my view, that's not what happened. And there is a continued struggle if liberal democracy wants to claim to have uh, been victorious to show that liberal democracy, not by using the illiberal and non-democratic means at its disposal, but the liberal and democratic ones, can, uh, can, can triumph using those means as well. Okay, uh, grievances and dissatisfaction, there's this classical argument you can find all over the world, but we didn't see a Christian state or a Buddhist state or what's different with Islam and we had an ISIS, an, an Islamic state. What makes Islam so radical force because in the, in, uh, in the holy scriptures of all monotheistic uh, uh, religions, we can find urges to violence. I, I understand that in the Old Testament there is, there, is a, there is a mandate to kill your brother or your sister if you change the religion and stuff like this. What makes Islam so different so this urge to violence is manifested also? I think you're, first of all, exactly right that the impulse to violence can be found in many scriptures, not all scriptures. We don't find 
a Quaker ISIS. We don't find a Jain ISIS. So I think it, it matters that there are distinctions between religions. Now, I would tend to see Islam as uh, not unique by any means, but it does have certain things in its, in its scripture and in its history that makes it easier to weaponize in this political way. Um, I think that the work, for example, uh, of Michael Cook is very illustrative in this way, where you can find, in a way, um, he analogizes the history of the different religions to um, some, some religions simply have suggestions that are embedded like a, like a pushy waiter at a restaurant trying to push a special on you. And he considers Islam one of them, where it's very easy for a certain type of, uh, of, um, of conquest-based um, posture toward, toward politics and toward other states uh, to be used from the religion. It's, it's simply more obvious than others, but it's not exclusive to Islam. OK. We see a lot of the terrorist acts are carried by a second generation, people that they were born Maybe they're the most, correct me if I'm wrong, in numbers, the terrorists are more of a second generation uh, Muslims instead of third, or se third generation. What does this tell us? Does it tell us just because that our Western educational system has failed to the basic task to make citizens out of persons? Or it means something more that we have to, to realize? Um, as I said, uh, there are several, several reasons in France, for France, I think. And I uh, forgot one reason, it's laicity also. Because in the, in the speech of uh, ISIS and of uh, Al-Qaeda, laicity, <laughs> laicity, French laicity is a very big problem, you know, because um, it, uh, it's very unique, it's, uh, uh, except uh, Turkey. Uh, uh, we, we don't have a, a like system uh, in the world like in France, and I think it's um, it's a bit um, a symbol um, of how uh, uh, democracy are evolved. In fact, you say um, that uh, there's no uh, no fight, in fact, uh, against. Uh, uh, liberal democracy and etc. I, I agree with you, but I don't. I don't agree because for the converters, les convertis, je sais pas comment ça, les convertis, the, the, the people convert, the conversions um, mm -hmm. in France, in France you have uh, 30 percent of conversions in the terrorist fighters. So it's a big number, you know. It's a big symbol. They are European. Uh, at the, at the base, their roots are European or Spanish, Italian, or I, I don't know. And they, want, they wanted to be an Islamic fighter. And we consider uh, that these people uh, don't want to be a, Euro a European or a, a Western people. They want to be like the Caliph, like Muhammad. They want to live another life with um, a thing which is very interesting to, uh, to listen when they, they speak about that. It's the, 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 they don't want to have too much choices. Because if you become a fighter of ISIS, you are a fighter, you have a wife, you, are, you have to make uh, children, you have to uh, follow the caliphate. And you don't have to be uh, confronted um, uh, with the, 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 the all the choices that a liberal uh, country uh, gave to you. They the say that. The fear of freedom that Eric yeah. Fromm wrote a book about it. Yeah, the, the Romans say that also, when they explain why they converse and why they, uh, uh, they leave uh, France uh, in uh, 2014. They say, because I am a mother, I am a wife, and I am uh, a lion of the caliphate. So they want to be uh, another person. It's for the conversers. After that, when you speak, uh, you, you speak about uh, school and education, I think it's very, very important to say that uh, Boko Haram in Nigeria, Boko Haram means uh, the Occidental education is the worst, uh, is the enemy. 
And in fact, they want to uh, uh, exterminate, they want to kill this kind of uh, open-minded uh, system, this kind of, of, uh, of system which is, uh, in fact, the, 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 the proof that uh, uh, Western and uh, European uh, countries um, have uh, found the good, uh, the good way uh, to think. There is a problem of their positionment, their position, uh, between what they want to be, what they are, and what they believe to be. <laughs> the hate or the fear of the liberal or democracy or the liberal states or the liberal whatever you tell, it's something that we can see it all over in all history the last 200 years. And all these movements, I can you know the nationalists in Japan, they hated liberal democracy, fascism hated liberal democracy, communism hated, they faded. Islam is something that grew up again. I mean, this hate, hatred uh, re-emerged. Why is that? And what makes me wonder is something that we have we have uh, a cosmic state, La Cité, we have in Turkey, where there is a Muslim population. And we didn't see their radical or weaponized Islam, even as, as resistance to the dictators, the Turkish generals that made dictators. Why they raised in, in different areas of the world and not, let's say, in Turkey? That's a great question. I mean, uh, uh, Turkey did have, of course, an, an Islamist government. So there was an Islamist option that was very obvious. In 2002, and, before that, it was forbidden. Yes, that's right. And the, the, there were other pathways for rebellion, of course, secular pathways, Kurdish pathways that existed in Turkey before. I think also what, what you get, though, as Anne Clementine suggested, is that you find places where liberal democracy has been tried in a way that, frankly, it never was has been tried in Turkey. And it is, is as if, while so many problems are solved with the existence of a liberal democracy, there is some deep sense of dissatisfaction, almost like a spiritual sense of dissatisfaction, that is invariably uh, caused when liberal democracy solves those other problems. And you'd find in actually all of the places that, that, that you listed, even in Japan, that people simply are not satisfied with the life that, that uh, is, is on offer for them uh, through the, the uh, well-functioning societies that they, they live in. A small, small group of people, and in some cases that gets inflected as Islamism. But yeah, that is something that, that in almost everyone I spoke to who was attracted to this message uh, of ISIS that they would say, that they realized that the societies that they lived in were uh, in many ways paradises for other people. They were already a place where you could, if you wanted to have it, have a job, you could have a, an, an education, you could have a family, but was it enough to satisfy you in the deepest sense of your soul? And they would say no. Um, again, most people, I, for example, my soul is very satisfied living in a liberal democratic state. But there's enough people who are dissatisfied with it, and a few of them will find violent ways to, uh, to, to express that. Okay, I have myriad questions again, a lot of questions, but next year in Delphi, okay? Next year. <laughs> next year in Delphi. Thank you very much for being Thank you. with us. Uh, Σα ευχαριστούμε που ήσασταν μαζί μα. Δυστυχώ έχω μια επίμονη κυρία στο αυτή μου που λέει ότι πρέπει να κλείσω γρήγορα, γρήγορα. Και κλείνω. Σα ευχαριστώ και καλό σα απόγευμα.